Welcome back to Tokyo on Fire. Okinawa is the southernmost prefecture of Japan, and on the far western side is a small island called Yonaguni. Recently, the Japanese have turned on a radar switch, and that has caused a lot of concern with the Chinese. Michael, we're both watching this. There was a big flare-up, and the Chinese are really wagging their finger. It's very strange. I mean, the Chinese are actually building islands in the South China Sea to create a fait accompli, a, a situation which defines this is Chinese territory because we have islands now. Right. Uh, it used to be water, but... It used to be water. Here we have an actual island, and all that the, the self-defense forces have done is turn on a radar that faces outward uh, because until then, Yonaguni, the westernmost island of the Japanese chain, had defending it two policemen. And 10 bullets. No, who knows how many bullets, but, but two policemen defending the border. And that was, of course, there's the, the Coast Guard is, is around there, but there's no Coast Guard base. In order to put some force of some kind, they have put a force of a few hundred persons running a special radar system. Mm -hmm. Now, for some reason, the Chinese government sees this as hypocrisy. Yes. That Japan criticizes us for our actions in the South China This shows State. that the Japanese are on a war footing. Yes, of course. Uh, and the thing is, it's in an atmosphere. It, the security legislation went online mm -hmm. this last, last week, and at that point, we have a confluence of events. That security legislation is controversial within Japan. And that's due to its, its constitutional basis, whether it has been put in place in a manner that is coherent with constitutional practice. That's what the problem is mm -hmm. here. But of course, from the external perspective, there is this question of whether Japan is pacifist or not. That's a separate issue than what has happened on Yonaguni, where SDF forces have simply established a listening post. Mm -hmm. and for the Chinese to suddenly say, oh, this is, this is a terrible militarization, they're saying, yes, it's close to our island of Taiwan, mm -hmm. which the Taiwanese may have something to say about, and it's also close to the Senkakus. Yes, of course it's close to the Senkakus. Anything in Okinawa is, can be construed as being sent close to the Senkakus. Right. So the it, whole narrative is just completely overblown. Sure, this is Japanese territory. There is no dispute about that. The Japanese are practicing what any normal country might do. Putting a base on its own territory. Who, who would have thought? Well, it's not really even a base. It's just a listening post, isn't it? Well, there, there, you know, there are people who are going to be there. Before, there was no one there except for policemen. Okay, well, maybe 1,500 people uh, who inhabit the island no, as, well. as a whole, yeah, right. there's the, the citizens there. And they had their own internal... The, Yonaguni is, an, is a community that had its own internal debate about whether or not it would accept this base. Mm -hmm. And they came to the conclusion, yes, we will. And they worked out with the central government an arrangement about how these SDF would fit into the community. No problem. Right. And, it has, and no one protesting in front of the prime minister's residence of, over the security legislation, none of them have anything wrong to say about Yonaguni. So why are we talking about this on Tokyo on Fire? Isn't this just an example of the Chinese sable rattling and trying to scare you know, the Japanese into being a little bit more pliant? Well, it has to do with the fact that we're seeing also the effects in Japan of the U.S. presidential election, particularly the statements by Donald Trump mm -hmm. regarding the security relationship that the United States has both with Japan and South Korea. His statements that the two countries are getting a free ride, that the United States should no longer support this, the specific relationships that it has with both countries, that they have to take up their own defense, even to, in, up to and including having nuclear weapons of their own. This kind of rhetoric is something that Mr. Abe has to deal with, and he dealt with it this mm -hmm. week. Yes, he was in Washington, D.C. with the uh, Prime Minister, the President of the United States, and the President of South Korea. And they, they were all there for the nuclear summit, but he also, this week, had a very long conversation with the Wall Street Journal. Mm -hmm. And they, he, he put forth what was, unsurprisingly, a very strong case for the Japan-U.S. relationship, for the Japan-U.S. security treaty, and also for his security legislation as good for the United States. Mm -hmm. And the Yonaguni deployment 
is a demonstration of Japan's participation in that arrangement and its participation in its own defense. And that is the, the, the environment in which it's, it's being played out, which is why the Chinese response to it seems, again, it's just actually helping make yes. that relationship right. more relevant. Right. If the Chinese can get upset about Japanese taking responsibility of their own defense and say you are sable rattling and you are threatening the, the, the uh, security of the region, okay, well then maybe we really need the Americans nearby because the, the Chinese are just acting weird. Yeah, well not only that, but kind of welcome to the party. I mean, this is, we are on a path to increase this cooperation for the Japanese to take on more of the burden, to diminish the, the reliance on the United States for Japan to be its own nation as the prime minister is trying to craft. Yeah, and, and if this is purely for Chinese domestic politics, maybe. okay, maybe, mm -hmm. that's fine. But if there is any doubt within the Chinese mind that, the, that Japan, under Mr. Abe, is not going to defend its territory, mm -hmm. well, they'd better get a be different idea. And certainly, putting the listening post and its radar capacities on Yonaguni does indicate that Japan is going to draw the line in the Senkakus. Right. That there is no question that Japan is emphasizing its Okinawa front and de-emphasizing its front up north with the northern territories in Russia as compared to its right. historical bias, which has been toward looking toward first the USSR mm -hmm. and then toward Russia. No, we're switching our assets and we're moving ourselves to be physically present on Okinawan islands all the way right up to the border of China. One could say, and actually one could sense that this escalation has been, I mean, since the Chinese have been dumping tons of sand onto the, the reefs and creating these artificial islands. In the South China Sea, we have to be careful. We, we did, because we're talking about the East China Sea. They've been working in terms of their claims in the South China Sea. The East China Sea claims have been relatively quiet. Of course, Chinese Coast Guard vessels are constantly infringing the territorial waters of Japan around the Senkakus. Mm -hmm. And there are still disputes about gas development in the East China Sea, in the northern areas, where there are where there's a no clear agreement where the line of demarcation of the two econ the exclusive economic zones up there. But it's quiet. Things are really moving and loud and involving a lot of moving of sand and, and, and equipment, and now aircraft can now land on landing strips, that place is, going, is getting very loud. It's still quiet up here, but Japan is nevertheless being pre getting prepared. Mm -hmm. Yonaguni, the westernmost island of Okinawa, switched on the radar listening post, and this has caused a big turmoil with Japan-Chinese relations. We will continue to watch this.